So let's talk real quick about cubics. So just a kind of a typical cubic is y equals x cubed. So notice that it's usually the shape, you've seen the shape before, and notice it has this uh, x-intercept, also sometimes called a zero, at zero. Um, so it has this curve like this. We can kind of um, mess with these a little bit. Like if I turn this, let's say I subtract 5x from it. Notice it's still a cubic, x to the third power, or I could say even 5x squared, something like that. Uh, but let's just make it a minus 5x for now. Um, it's still a cubic, but notice it has this goes up, turns, comes back, back down. And it, now it has three uh, x-intercepts, or three zeros, three places where if you plug in those x values, this evaluates to a, to a zero. Now notice I could do, um, three is the most I'm going to get for my number of x-intercepts, or my number of zeros. Um, I could get more, I could get, I uh, could not get more but I could get less. So like I said, what if I turn this into a, a minus 5x squared? Now notice I still have that same kind of basic cubic shape as I did before, but I only have two zeros uh, because it comes up and just touches it here, comes back down and goes through. We'll talk about that later, but this would be called a repeated root or repeated zero. Now, what's the minimum? What's the minimum number of zeros I could get on this? Now I'll just turn this back into this. Now it has three. Well, I could shift this up, right? If I go plus two, that shifts it up, the whole thing up two. Keep shifting it up. Instead of plus two, let's make that a plus four, or maybe a plus seven. Ah, so now, notice I have just one zero, exactly one zero, and I don't have any other intercepts. I actually do have additional zeros, which we'll talk about, but I only have one x, uh, what, one x intercept. So let's go ahead and sketch a couple of possibilities, um, you know, just from a description. So cubic. So I know that cubics basically look like that or like that, but it could be, you know, this direction as well. But I know that they have at most two turns in them and they're going to go, their, their ends, you know, their extreme behavior is going opposite directions. So a cubic with a positive intercept and two negative intercepts. So as long as I make a curve that looks like a cubic that goes through these points, I'm fine. So something like that, maybe. And as you know, you know, there's an infinite number of possibilities here, right? We could have gone, gone like that, all kinds of possibilities. Next one, a cubit with exactly one positive intercept. So just the one. So that means if it's going to have some curves in it, it's going to happen not near the x-intercept. So it could be something like that, or it, you know, it could be, uh, maybe it just goes through it and then does that curve up here, or maybe just flattens out right there and comes back up. Those are all possibilities. All right, last one, one positive and exact, exactly one positive and exactly one negative. So I know that those end behaviors have to do opposite directions. So I'm just going to say it goes down to the left, up to the right. So let's say it passes through here. Now, if I go through at this intercept, I'm going to have to come back up and I'm going to have to hit it another time. You know, if I, I come all the way through it, I'm going to have to come through and hit it another time. So I'm going to say it just hits this just once, just glances at it and comes up like that. That's called a repeated root or a repeated zero. And we, we can talk. Uh, we'll talk more about that later in the unit. I'm going to clean that up a little bit so it's a little bit smoother. There we go. And as you know, there's a lot of possibilities. Like, you know, it could be something like this. Lots of possibilities. As long as it just has exactly one positive and exactly one negative. All right, that's the first part of the assignment.